So Honey has been stealing money from thousands of creators. They spend millions on advertising. Where is Honey getting the money? But don't worry, this is not another video rehashing the drama. Instead, we're gonna talk about how creators, even some of the largest creators here on YouTube, could have caught on to what was happening a lot sooner and how you are still vulnerable to losing affiliate revenue unless you fundamentally change the way you set up your affiliate links. If you're a creator and you've ever used an affiliate link, Honey would allegedly swoop in, taking credit and pocketing the money. We want creators everywhere to be empowered and never get taken advantage of again. And we happen to be an affiliate business ourselves and also software experts. So in this video, we're gonna cover why creating your own short links for everything will prevent you from losing affiliate revenue, what tracking software is the best out there, the five most important principles you need to follow so brands can't mislead you, and how to monitor your affiliate traffic so you know when something's wrong. Efficient app, they're onto something. How did I get here? The first thing you need to know is why it's important to never post anything online without your own short link and to never, ever, ever post an affiliate link without your own link tracking. Typically, when a creator works with a brand through an affiliate or sponsorship deal, they give you a link and they say, put this link in your description or your newsletter or even hard coded into your video or they give you a QR code. How it works is a brand will have a super long link with a bunch of UTM data, aka information of where the link clicks are coming from. And a brand will typically have their own link shortening software. So they'll give a short link to a creator and it looks something like this. Short links have caught on over the years because they look nicer and neater when shared. However, the link shortening part is just a superficial benefit. The real benefit is all the data that you, or in most cases, the brand get. The problem of posting a brand's link directly is that you are giving full control and all of that data over to the brand, and it makes it really difficult for you to catch any errors. And trust us, it happens a lot, like a lot more than you think. I agree, short links are a very powerful tool for creators and they're onto something. For example, in a recent newsletter that we sent out, our link tracking showed that we sent over a brand 150 clicks, but their affiliate platform showed that we sent nine. If we had used the brand's link only, we would have absolutely no leverage or data to point to. And ultimately we would have just assumed that our audience isn't really interested in that particular brand, which would have been false. And it absolutely sucks to put in all this hard work to share a brand with your audience and not get rewarded for it. But that's exactly what the Honey Scam relied on, creators not having oversight over their own data. So know that every time that you are posting the brand's short link instead of your own, you are exposing yourself to vulnerabilities. And that's why it's so important to always, always use your own short link when you post anything online. So now that you know you need your own short links, you need to know what the best link shortening software is. And for that, I'm gonna bring in Alex because he's been obsessed with links since he was basically born and has tried every link shortener on the market. I think a lot about links. I dream about links. This, uh, that's sad. You are a link. You might have heard of Bitly, TinyURL, Short.io, and many others, but none of these are the best link shortening tools. No, really, I have used all of them. For many years, the tools in the space just plain sucked. No one was truly innovating. First, there's TinyURL. Well, you can't really take them that seriously, and you probably stumbled upon them because someone told you to get a link shortening tool, you searched, and you landed on TinyURL, who serves the purpose of just shortening a URL, not for someone who actually wants to own their data or run analytics. Okay, so then there's Short.io. I used them for about a year when I was just trying to get off my own self-hosted solution, and it was fine at first until I realized that they have all my data, but I can't even run proper analytics. It was a mess. Interacting with it, adding, removing, editing links, headache. Bitly, bitly, bitly. Oh, you popular little tool, you. You recognize the name, don't you? Ah, uh, yeah, because they've done a damn good job in making sure that the entire internet shares their domain via short links. Clever Bitly built their brand around encouraging users to share links using their bit.ly domain because it, well, benefited them. 
there are two problems with this. For one, when you're using bit.ly links, you're building their brand, not yours. Secondly, when people see a bit.ly link due to familiarity, they trust it, but you shouldn't. No, 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 no. You actually have no idea what link is on the other side of a bit.ly link. Because anyone can create a bit.ly link, anything could be on the other side. Spam, not safe for work, anything. All of our short links are built using efficient.link. That means that no one else but us can ever create a short link with that domain, ever. If you trust us, you get to trust that link. Okay, so think of it this way. Using your own domain is essentially telling your audience that this is a link I created and I approve. Sure, on Bitly's paid plan, they allow you to have a custom domain, but most people, especially creators, are just gonna start off on the free plan and they can't have a custom domain. So Bitly encourages this bad practice from the start using a bit.ly link and dot o. Don't do it. Not to mention, Bitly as a platform is dated. It was built in 2008. This is probably why you've heard of it and also why you shouldn't want to use it. The links don't even update in real time. And trust me, I know you're probably not using a link tracking tool right now, but when those clicks start rolling in and you get to see it, the dopamine, the dopamine. So which link shortening software should you use? Well, we use and recommend Dub. They are the most modern link shortening platform. Literally, just look at Dub's interface versus Bitly. Dub allows you to use your own custom domain, even on the free tier. And if that's too much work, you can still use their own short links, but just, just don't do that. Like, listen to what we've been saying. Just, just don't do that. With Dub, you can easily spin up short links, add tags for organization, and even enable things like password protection, expiring links, and geo-targeting. AKA, if you want to send people to different links depending on their country, you can do that. It works great, especially for like Amazon affiliate links. I literally live in Dub Analytics and I probably check it at least a dozen times a day. It's true. I walk in, he's in Dub Analytics. I go to bed, he's in Dub Analytics. He's dub, brushing dub, his dub, teeth, dub, you guessed dub, it, Dub, dub Analytics. Dub, dub, dub. Hello. For example, if I post a short link on social media, I can see how many people click that link real time, what country they're coming in from and what platform is getting the most engagement. And the craziest part is, even if no one publicly likes your post, thank you LinkedIn, you can see that people are actually clicking on your link, even on the post that they didn't even like. This gives us real time feedback on what's working. All of this, and they have the most generous free tier of all the tools. So go and grab a Dub account by using our link in the description, which goes through Dub, so we know that you clicked it, and it will also lock you in a discount for if you ever choose to upgrade to a higher tier. Oh, and if you do sign up for their paid tier, they even give you a free custom domain for the first year. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go make like a link and cut this short. I'm gonna make like a short link and cut this long link, short, long link, short. Back to Andra. Okay, but even the best software won't help you set up your short links correctly. So here are five principles to follow when you are doing that. Number one, as a refresher, when a brand gives you an affiliate link or a sponsored link, always replace it with your own. Not sometimes, always. This isn't weird, the brand won't care. They honestly don't even really need to know because you're still sending all that traffic to them. You're just adding another layer of protection in front of it with your own short link. Does it pass legal? But careful, always check the contract you have with brands, affiliates, and sponsors. It's always good to get permission or write it into your contract that you can use a custom URL. As a compromise, one thing that we've done is sometimes set a custom short link that goes to the brand's custom short link. That way both parties can track, but also double check that your short linker allows the double redirect. Number two, like Alex said, use your own domain for your short links. This is your brand you're building, not your sponsors, and certainly not Bitly's. Yeah, and if you look at the description of a lot of my videos, you'll see that a lot of the links that we use at Legal Eagle have the custom domain legaleagle.link. I would much rather use that than an unbranded URL with random letters and numbers. It shows my audience that they can trust my links. Number three, create an organized system for your short links because most people don't put any thought at all into what the short link says, but you can. So for example, all of our Amazon affiliate links have this format, or all of our software short links have this format. Number four, swap out where you direct traffic as needed. For example, when you hard code a link in a video or a post on socials, you can always change where that traffic is going if you have your own short link. So 
Let's say I was a content creator and Honey sponsored one of my videos back in the day. And right now, all this controversy came out. Well, guess what? If I use my own short link in my video, I can just redirect that traffic elsewhere, like the video exposing Honey. Or Andra, my video talking about the lawsuit that I filed against Honey. Number five, use short links everywhere that you post. Your videos, your YouTube description, your Instagram posts, your ex posts, TikTok, your newsletter, your website, literally everywhere. This will give you a full picture of your footprint on the internet and give you insights into what's working and what you should do more of. So now that you have your link tracking set up, you might be wondering, so what do I actually do with all of this? As a creator, you have something that so many businesses want, and that's attention and eyeballs. You figured out how to make people care about you and trust your recommendations. So here are four things you should do to monitor that everything you just set up is working correctly so you can get paid what you deserve. If you're using Dub for affiliate, Bookmark your analytics with your affiliate platform analytics side by side. At least once a week, check that your dub analytics and your affiliate platform analytics are lining up. Now, just a quick note, some affiliate platforms track links slightly differently. So being off by 10 to 15% in the number of clicks is okay, but if it's more than that, you can trust that something is likely broken. If you notice that something is different, then you wanna immediately email the brand. Now, I know you're probably gonna wanna wait and see, but I promise you the sooner that you reach out, the better, because every day that you're waiting, you are losing valuable data and therefore potential revenue. Simply show them a screenshot of your dub analytics and tell them that you're noticing a discrepancy and you're concerned about their platform. Now, a good partnership manager will take this seriously and look into it immediately. Working in the software space, we're here to tell you that bugs are extremely common, like more common than you think. Or in the case of Honey, theft is common, allegedly. It's not stealing when you look this cute. Remember, if link tracking is broken, the brand is still benefiting from all the traffic that you're sending over. You're the one that's losing out, so it is in your best interest to keep an eye out on things. And finally, always check your analytics and dub before renewing or renegotiating any sponsorships. With the more data that you own, you're going to be able to have a benchmark for how many link clicks you're sending over on average. You'll also have a better understanding of if a campaign performed above average or as you expected. If it's a top performer, then you can call this out and you can use it to inform your pricing and also potentially renegotiate your rates. Brands can benefit by making creators feel small and by not being transparent. For example, they can negotiate lower rates with you. And the only way to combat this is to own your own data and leverage it and show them where there are errors. But Honey isn't the only popular software that has been misleading creators and business owners over the last few years. Watch this video next to understand how Notion might be killing your productivity and why it's time to ditch it.